Welcome to Tanaka Kaisen's History of Warfare channel. Glad to have you here. Today's episode is a virtual and physical side-by-side -side comparison of two vehicles of war, which we have aptly called Tanaka Kaisen's Side-by-Side. -side. This episode is titled Juggernauts of Their Time. Today's side-by-side -side participants are not competing for glory in a who-would-win scenario. These vehicles did not exist during the same time period. These two ships were selected because they embody the zenith of their respective periods of ship design. I humbly present the HMS Dreadnought and the HIJMS Yamato. For the uninitiated among you, HMS stands for His Majesty's Ship and HIJMS stands for His Imperial Japanese Majesty's Ship. These ships broke all the rules of battleship design upon their commissioning. The visual representations forthcoming are of the Dreadnought as she was built, in 1907 and the Yamato as she was sunk in 1945. The goal of this side-by-side -side is to highlight the abject disparity between the two ships' designs. This side-by-side -side is not an attempt to fictitiously pit the two ships against one another, that would be sheer folly, but to underline the immense difference less than 40 years made in battleship design in the first half of the 20th century. Let's compare these two ships on paper, as it were. As we can see, the Yamato weighed just under four times more than the Dreadnought. She had four times the crew, but wasn't twice as long as the Dreadnought. The stark difference in armament is awe-inspiring. I cannot stress enough how much the introduction of the Dreadnought changed the course of naval construction. In 1906, there were no other all-big gun ships in any navy. All other battleships of the time had mixed armament. This meant that they may have had two or three large caliber turrets, then they had four more slightly smaller caliber turrets, and then smaller still casemate guns that were in single mounts along the beam. This made for difficulty in differentiating shell splashes when aiming and caused more headaches for ammunition storage. Now these headaches were accepted for one simple fact. All Navy architects assumed battleship duels would continue to be close in affairs. Indeed, they had been so throughout the history of naval warfare up until that time. Those preconceptions changed after the Japanese rout of the Russian fleet in the 1905 Battle of Tsushima. This battle was fought successfully by the Japanese at mid to long ranges. Suddenly, the more observant navies woke to the fact that all big guns might now be the way to go. So influential was the HMS Dreadnought that all battleships built after her with all big gun construction were oftentimes classified not as battleships, but as dreadnoughts. Alternatively, all earlier mixed armament battleships were subsequently classified as pre-dreadnoughts after 1907. So, when looking at the dreadnought, understand that she was the most powerful battleship afloat in 1907. All navies quickly worked to replace their pre-dreadnoughts and build their quote-unquote dreadnought fleets from square one. Now, the cosmic joke for the British was that they too needed to replace all their dreadnoughts. A battleship building contest ensued, principally between Great Britain and Germany, culminating in the modern navies that fought for supremacy of the oceans in World War I, only a few short years later. The Amata was built in complete secrecy in the late 1930s and early 1940s. Her specifications were hidden so well that even after she was sunk in 1945, four years after putting to sea, the Allied navies thought she was like the gaggle of American battleships of the time, which were all armed with the smaller 16-inch guns. Unfortunately, by the time the Yamato and her sister ship, the Musashi, were commissioned, naval air power had begun to make its ultimately successful bid to become the main offensive arm of all navies, usurping the battleships once and for all. The Yamato was the most heavily armed and most heavily armored battleship in history. One of her triple 18.1 inch turrets and barbettes weighed as much as a fleet destroyer of the time. Additionally, the 18.1 inch gun was the largest weapon ever installed on a warship. Many naval aficionados called the German Bismarck class the most powerful battleship of World War II, but once the Yamato was commissioned, she dwarfed the Bismarck class completely in all respects save for the top speed. On paper, there was no other single battleship in the world in the 1940s that could have successfully gone toe to toe with the Yamato and come out the victor. Without further ado, let's see these two dreadnoughts side by side. The immense size discrepancy is impossible to ignore. The main guns of the dreadnought are only marginally larger than the secondary 6.1 inch turrets of the Yamato. Let's look at the performance. A full broadside from the dreadnought, which constituted 8 of her 10 barrels, 
weighed 6,800 pounds. Each shell weighed about 850 pounds. The Yamato, on the other hand, had a broadside of nine barrels at 28,962 pounds for the whole broadside. And each of her shells weighed around 3,218 pounds. The Yamato's broadside was an astounding 22,162 pounds heavier. Even the American Iowa class of battleship, which can be considered the closest thing to a contemporary of the Amato's, her broadside weighed 24,300 pounds. That was 4,000 pounds less than the Amato. Only the planned but never completed American Montana class would have had a heavier broadside weighing around 32,400 pounds. Although the guns of the Montana class were a smaller caliber than the Amato. Let's look at main armament ranges. The 12 inch guns of the Dreadnought could fire a shell 22.8 kilometers or 14 miles with an effective range of 14.5 kilometers or 9 miles. The Yamato, on the other hand, could hurl an 18.1 inch shell 42 kilometers or 26 miles and effectively fire said shell 25 kilometers or 16 miles. Let's talk a little bit about what effective fire is. Effective fire can be defined as fire that can be spotted and aimed correctly. Without radar, the Yamato could only fire her shells 25 kilometers, and this was really due to the curvature of the Earth. No ship or person can see over the horizon. So the Yamato could fire a shell 42 kilometers, but have no idea what she was aiming at or if she had indeed hit her target. Now the Japanese tried to implement the practice of using spotter planes to record and relay fall of shot back to the ship over the horizon, but this was never successfully used in battle. Now the Iowa class of battleships were using radar controlled fire by 1945 for their 16 inch guns. So the Iowas could successfully fire on the Amato over the horizon without the much fear of accurate return fire from the Amato. The Amato had an absolutely overwhelming number of anti-aircraft guns in the guise of the 25 mm triple gun mounts. Now the proven lack of effectiveness of these motorized mounts aside, the Dreadnought can't realistically be expected to compete since, in 1907, attack aircraft didn't exist. On a future side-by-side, -side, we'll be looking at the Yamato as commissioned in 1941 versus the Yamato we see here in 1945. If we focus on the profile of these two ships, we can clearly see that the Yamato's rangefinder was placed very high on the ship's superstructure, giving her an effective range that was 10.5 kilometers further than the Dreadnought's 14.5 kilometer effective range. Let's look at the armor. Now you're probably wondering, how come the Yamato weighed nearly four times as much as the Dreadnought, but wasn't that much larger or longer than the Dreadnought? Let's compare the armor. Although in profile we can see the bulge armor on the Yamato, the armor hidden within is elusive. The easiest comparison is to look at the total weight of armor of the two ships. The Dreadnought was heavily armored for her time. She had 3,324 tons of steel dedicated to armor protection, which was just over 18% of her entire displacement. The Yamato, on the other hand, dedicated 30.8% of her entire displacement to armor protection. This means her armor weighed 21,266 tons, which was more than what the Dreadnought displaced in her entirety. There are many other facets that can be compared between these two ships, but because each was designed to fight in a completely different era, we'll leave the comparisons where they are. Now to cap this video, a brief history of each ship's respective careers is in order. Ironically, both these juggernauts of their times could be considered white elephants when push came to shove, when they were put to the ultimate test, that of combat. The HMS Dreadnought changed battleship design when she was introduced onto the world stage. In a twist of fate, by the time World War I broke out, she had already been eclipsed by newer and better battleships less than 10 years after her commissioning. The newer battleships benefited from the new concept of all center line main armament. The dreadnought designers had adhered to the existing philosophy of the turn of the century, more turrets are better. They had placed a turret on each beam. If the dreadnought was engaging targets off only a single beam, then one turret stood uselessly facing empty ocean. With longer range battles being the new norm, arranging all guns to fire off both beams just made more sense. During the Great War, the Dreadnought earned the distinction of being the only battleship in history to successfully engage and sink a submarine when she rammed the German U-29. Unfortunately, she did not participate in any naval battles and was relegated to coastal defense duties midway through the war. After the end of hostilities, she was put in reserves in 1919 and sold for scrap in May 
of 1921. Now, the Yamato had a marginally better war record. She was kept from battle from 1941 to 1945, ironically because she was deemed too expensive to be squandered on what the Japanese Navy command identified as skirmishes. She was repeatedly held back in anticipation of the decisive battle. Indeed, Japan Navy Command was so fixated on this imaginary World War II recreation of the Battle of Tsushima that on several occasions they did not commit their larger ships to battle even when they were available and would have had a pronounced effect on the outcome of said battles. She was known as Hotel Yamato by some Japanese sailors and soldiers due to her apparent inactivity with regards to combat and the fact that she sat at the truck naval base for nearly a year spanning 1942 and 1943, leaving only for a single day. One can only speculate what would have transpired during the campaign for Guadalcanal had the Japanese had the fuel and the foresight to send the Yamato and Musashi and even the quote-unquote smaller battleships Nagato and Mutsu sailing into Iron Bottom Sound a few times. Now apart from being torpedoed on Christmas of 1943, she was not pressed into frontline action until October of 1944 in the defense of the Japanese Philippines occupation. She was attacked by aircraft, but the brunt of the attacks were focused on her sister ship the Musashi who succumbed to her damage. The following day, the Yamato and a substantial fleet of warships were rebuffed by a much smaller American force and the Japanese retired accomplishing little. This action marked the one and only time the Yamato fired her MiG guns against enemy surface vessels. Now the Yamato did not fight again until her final sortie to defend against the American invasion of Okinawa in April of 1945. The plan was to beach the ship off Okinawa and provide the beleaguered Japanese soldiers with a large artillery platform. Now she was sunk with great loss of life while en route to Okinawa by hundreds of American attack aircraft. During the battle, the Americans lost less than 30 aircraft and the Yamato rolled over, exploded brilliantly and sank. Now corrected to today's currency in US funds, for the loss of $19 million in aircraft, the $2,500,000,000 battleship was gone. Her sinking was the final nail in the proverbial coffin that was the previously undisputed reign of the battleship in naval warfare. At the time of the Yamato's loss, she and her brethren from other nations were obsolete in every role they had leading up to the Second World War. No other battleship would be commissioned after 1945, with the sole exception of the nearly completed HMS Vanguard. The Vanguard was fast and large, but still smaller and slower than the Iowa class, with a smaller main armament as well. She had eight 15-inch guns compared to the nine 16-inch guns of the Iowa. She was a white elephant when commissioned in May of 1946 and was scrapped 14 years later. The HMS Vanguard could have been more appropriately named the HMS Rearguard. Thanks for watching. If you want to see a specific side-by-side -side subject, leave me a comment. If you like what you watched, then subscribe. If you want to support this channel, please click the Buy Me A Coffee link in the video description and support the Tanaka Kaisen channel as you see fit. As this episode ends, I'm Tanaka Kaisen. I hope you learned something and enjoyed yourself while doing it. War is hell. Let's all take heed not to forget.